podcasting with Kerry Jones. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's podcast and with this episode being the 70th one I just want to say thank you again for sharing the journey with me and making it so popular and what it is today. This week's episode is something a bit different but my guest runs one of the biggest trout farms in the country bringing on 350,000 quality trout each year for stock in lakes around the country including Anglian Waters. That's Rutland, Grafham and Pittsford. And if it wasn't for people like him, our sport wouldn't be where it is today. So I thought it'd be good to see what goes on behind the scenes of this great sport we've got. He has such a passion for trout, I'm sure if he could, he'd have them swimming in his blood. But not only has he been fly fishing from a young age, he's recently taken over the fishing at Wimbledon Lake. And since he took it over four years ago, the lake has gone from strength to strength and with his high standards in quality of fish I'm sure Wimble Ball is sure to become Champions League of fly fishing venues to run a trout farm and a lake will be enough for most of us not for my guest but she admits he probably is a bit of a workaholic and this year during lockdown he took it one step further again but now he has opened the George Inn which is only a mile and a half from Wimbledon Lake and does accommodation for anglers plus my own experience the food there is second to none proper restaurant standards beautiful as well as good local beer a perfect place for a weekend's fishing on the border of Somerset and Devon so welcome to my chat with Mark Underhill well, it's a lovely part of the world you live in, isn't it? It is beautiful. Have you been here all your life? West Country lad all my life, yeah. Born in Somerset, which isn't very far away. Is it? And then and then um, we moved down to Dartmoor. I do class myself a bit of a, a, bit of a Devon lad, but although I was born in Taunton, so... Um, this place where we are now, this is your home? This is um, where I live, yeah. And this is Rainbow Valley Trout Farm? This is Rainbow Valley Trout Farm, yeah. So uh, set up mum and dad years ago. Yeah, it so this is where your parents... Yeah, from. yeah, yeah. Parents went into fish farming in the seventies, and uh, we sort of ended up here over the years, hopping from sort of site to site. Dad building farms here, there, and everywhere, and um, ended Was up it? ended up here. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's the ideal job for you because you did fish as a boy. You said, yeah. Yeah, I love fishing. Yeah, yeah. I learned on the on the little river called the Madford. Yeah. Which is at Hemiot, which we learned just you know, worming and messing around, and and then learned to fly fish. Actually, when I was I think thirteen. With a broken leg, two crutches. Did you? At Tavistock, yeah. After Dad had set the farm up down there with a chap working for my dad at the time who was a, um, done all the courses and I think one of these, you know, specialist fly fishermen. He was about seven, only about 17, 18 he was, but he taught me to fly fish on He's, crutches. That's, was your father interested in fishing? No, did no not at all. No? Not at all. So where no. did the idea come from to do From a magazine. Yeah, looking for something to do years ago. And... Uh, Saw fish farming, and I uh, thought he'd have a go at it. So he set up at Hemiock. I mean, so it, they, they certainly weren't pioneers because there were a few people that had been fish farming for several years before them. Fish farming, you know, sort of really took off in the sixties, really. Yeah. You know, and um, they started mid seventies, but um, they met a lot of good friends, met a lot of the people that were pioneers in fish farming. Um, yeah. And, and went from there really. So um, Hemiock to Tavistock and to here. So the the Tavistock at the time when you opened it, then it was. Not just a trout farm, you had a lake to go with it, or did I no come lakes, after? No, no lakes come after, a long time after. Oh, yeah, the lakes, were the lakes were there, not purely as fishing lakes, but there were there as more like big ponds, really, to grow fish on. But that part of the farm was never used. Was, was it, did you bring the trout on for general public use, or was it for lakes to fish then? Yeah, I think it hemmed me up on the first site we, my dad built, was um, a bit of, bit, yeah, we started off doing hotels. Uh, mainly hotels and restaurants, no general public really turning up there on the day for fish. And then yeah. several loads would go out to um, to other people, be sold on to other people to uh, would end up at the at the fishing lakes. 
Um, right. And so, then that was sold, and moved on to Tavistock. Oh, was it? Mm. So what's happened to that place now? It's run as a, I think it's caught a few coarse fish on there now. Is well, it? When we lived there, we, lived, we only lived in a wooden shed, so, um, you know, it was quite, quite crazy for a couple of years. No running water, no toilet, uh, portable toilet. Because um, he had a successful business and then he just, he got to start again then. Yeah, yeah, he lost everything when I was one or two years old and then saw fish farming. Oh, when you were that young, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then went back to work for his brother for a while and then, um, yeah, saw fishing, fish wow. farming in a magazine and thought he'd give it a go. So the first site he found to build a fish farm on was, was at Hemiok. So we lived there for two or three years. So the previous knowledge, you didn't have it? Not nothing? a clue. No, they learned, no, mum no. and dad learned as he went, yeah. Yeah, they were, um, yeah, the, I mean, yes, they had some great times there, though. You know, it's a, starting yeah. off and realising they could probably make a make a go at things again and, you know, make like, a bit of money again. And um, Like, over the yeah. years, through trout fishing, um, the name Tavistock Fishery has always been up there, you know? Absolutely. It's been around for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Why do yeah. you think that has lasted while others have... It's a great fishery. I think the biggest thing with Tavistock is it's got a great flow of water. You know, these, a lot of small fisheries, you know, have not got the flow. They are literally still water fisheries. There's no water going into them. They might be spring fed or, or you know, that sort of thing. But Tavistock's got a lot of water going through it, you know. It's, you know um, so your sister runs that? Sister though. runs it. She, that was built back in um, late 80s. Yeah, late 80s that was built. As in the fishery side of things. The fish farm been going there a lot longer. Oh, early, right. early 80s, but the fish, the fisheries, the, the big, the big ponds I mentioned were then turned into lakes, made bigger. Everything was cleared back, and um, Abigail turned it into a fishery, which has been very successful. Um, At what point then? Because so I guess that was your family home then. There was it was, it? yeah, 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 yeah. When did you branch out to do your own thing? Um, well, never really. I mean, I left. I left. I ran Tavistock when I was 16 to sort of 20, 21 years old as a fish farm. So we we're yeah. just serving the general public gutting fish all day, that sort of thing, when it was, when it was really, really busy with, you know, before the supermarkets had come on and fresh fish counters, that sort of thing. So selling fish, yeah. you know, live, and it, 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 we'd pick your own. You'd come down, we'd, you know, grab a net of fish, the customers or the kids would point, I want that one, that one, so we'd dispatch it, gut it, clean it, weigh it, and, you know, off yeah. they went with it. And it was extremely busy. It was the 70s, 80s? That was um, late, yeah, late 80s, 88, right. 89, when sort of fish shops like that, you know, fish yeah. farming shops were extremely busy. And then um, I thought, right, Dad built these two sites up here, it, it, up near um, sort of Delvers and Tiverton Way. And I thought, right, they're the, I need to get up there, really, because they're the bigger sites to run. Um, and I know Abigail was going to go and take on Tavistock, so I took a year out to, to Australia, travelled there for a while, messed around over there. Um, and when I came back, well, Dad had a heart attack, actually, so I came back a little bit early, oh. um, came back after seven months and started working here with my mum and my sister. So he wasn't one to rest on your, his laurels, your father, then? You wanted to... He, he oh, no, one success. Work, work, workaholic. Yeah? Yeah, and mum. So he was working, he built this then? Yes. Set yeah. this up? Built them you? all from scratch. Oh. Yeah, designed them all, built them all. I can remember actually um, you know, helping, you know, build this farm, because it's, it's supplied by a very old leet, which was obviously over, over years of being filled up with rubbish and branches and through, you know, on the edge of the wood, so he cleaned all that, took months to clean all that out. And they built the built the farm, and obviously put the fish in, and off we went, sort of thing. You put the house as well, built the house. Yeah, the house. Or yeah, there. yeah. We had to wait for um, Dad built this. I uh, bought the land probably about seven, eight years before a house came yeah. for sale nearby, oh, and that's right. a house up the valley. So um, we bought that place there, and then when Dad made enough money, we we sold that and built built the house here on site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was. Um, Have you noticed a difference since in say from? In the last 20 years, with fisheries... Fish farming's yeah. changed so much, and, and fisheries over the years, you know, there was a, there was a boom of, sort of, of fisheries back in the... I don't know what it was, probably 80s, 90s, you know, 2000s. Yeah. You know, fish, freight fishing was massive. I mean, it was huge. Everybody who had a, had a, had a bit of water set up a fishery, a trout fishery. Yeah. But also... Everybody who had a bit of water or could build a fish farm, built a fish farm. So this is when things became very hard. Competitive. Yeah. Um, very cutthroat. Um, sort of, you know, sort of 2010 onwards, 2015 onwards, very cutthroat. There's so many fish farms around. Um, 
yeah, it was it's like, pretty pretty like hard. The price of trout haven't increased a lot, does it? Not at all. Not so, at all. So, you know, the um, yeah, the margins are very tight. You know, I'm looking at my dad's books now. Who's been who's passed away 25 years ago? But look at his books now, and he, he was selling some fish more than we're selling for now, which is just unbelievable. Is uh, prices have just started going up now, simply because everything has just changed. I mean, the fisheries, all the fisheries that were in South Wales throughout the country, a lot of these small fisheries are now shut. The weed problem, the argulus problem, horrendous problem. So the easiest thing for them to do is go to course. So dozens, yeah. dozens, hundreds have gone to course. So that then put pressure on all these fish farms that also started up, these sort of hobby fish farms, I call them, that grew 50, 60 tonne, 40, 50, 60 tonne to sell the fisheries. You know, they all started struggling. So really, it's, 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 it's a whole circle. The boys that are in the beginning, the big boys, the big fish farmers, are the ones that are left. Yeah. So, you know, all the fish farms now are people that we started off fish farming with, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So how many fish would you read really a year then? We do about 250 to 300,000 fish a year to, to, all, to all our fisheries. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of headaches. From what areas then do you supply to? Well, again, it shrunk a little bit. We sell a lot of fish to Scotland years ago, an awful amount to Scotland. Um, for some reason, um, they just wanted our fish. I mean, we grow lovely fish. Our, our ponds are so lightly stocked, it's unbelievable. Is it? They're yeah. not crammed it. Oh, God, no. You can look at our ponds and you can't see a fish until you chuck a bit of pellet yeah. in. Yeah. And then they'll, then they'll appear. Is it? You know, it's all to do with con- you know, the, the, the you know, condition of the fish, really. Yeah. Nice tails, nice fins. You know, if, if you're a table farm and you're selling to the table, people don't give two monkeys about yeah. the condition of the fish, the condition of the tail. You look in the supermarkets, you can see the tails are all frayed. Oh, jeez. Do you know what? I saw, I took a picture of it. Mm-hmm. Morrison's it was, I'll say, say the name. I parked up in Morrison's the other day and there was these banners outside, you know, different things. Yeah, and it said, yeah. uh, Fresh Scottish salmon, right? Mm. And it was like the wor- the worst. If you was a fisherman, you'd laugh. Oh, absolutely! It was rounded the tail, yeah. right? It was yeah. dark, mm. and I thought somebody in the marketing department needs to be told that what a, a, a salmon looks like. Yeah, and it was cringingly bad, you know. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's had a bit of bad press actually, haven't it? Uh, the salmon. The salmon. Has. Has, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, so um, do you supply clubs and private waters? And- no, we do a few. We do a few clubs in the old private water. Nothing much. Our main, our main customers now are really the Midland waters. You know, Anglian water, Rutland, Grath, and Pittsford. Do you stock those as well? Yeah, yeah put a lot of fish in them. A lot of fish into Rutland, um, and obviously Draycott as well. The big waters. Yeah, and we it takes do. some doing to travel up there. Then, is yeah, it? we get haulier coming, so do all that. I mean, I, I've done. I've done quite a bit of traveling over my over the years with my own haulage and everything. But I just, I'm not going to do that anymore now. It's just you lose someone else to it. Yeah, you bigger lorry, take more fish, and I don't like being on the roads anymore now. It's just too many idiots out there now. So, uh, yeah. and, and, and delivering fish is very stressful. You know, it's uh, it's I just don't need that anymore now. I've done it. I've done it for thirty years. So I'm just trying to yeah. <laughs> let someone else take turn up, but um, officially and open the tank, seeing a couple of them wallowing on the top. It's happened. I've done it. It's a nightmare. Is it? Yeah, when I first started off doing fish and everything, not really know what I was doing. Um, yeah, I've done all that. Learned some big lessons. Costly lessons. Absolutely costly. costly. Very embarrassing. But uh, yeah, been what, there, is, done is it. it all rainbows, or you've got a selection of different? No, all rainbows. You know, we used to do browns years ago, but browns are, are finicky old things, and um, don't like the summers and yeah. disease and funguses and all, all sorts of things. And because um, I've heard over the years, like people say that uh, browns take longer to put the weight onto rainbows. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I mean, like, again. If your fish are heavily stocked, they're going to take a bit longer to grow. So yeah. again, our ponds are very lightly stocked. We, when we did have browns, we you know we could get some good weight on them. They were slightly slower, but you know nothing, nothing yeah. to what a lot of people think they were. We got a, a club water up with us up around the Ranglin Club, Clinvaud. We got a, a, a fish farm there, and uh, every now and again, a brown just happens to be in amongst the rainbows. Yeah. And whether or not it's a competition thing, they seem to keep up the same weight then. Yeah. It's because they're amongst everyone else, I suppose, so they, yeah. they don't know they're a brown problem. The browns are, they're, they're a crazy fish. I mean, we, got, we have got fish on the farm, you know, big browns. Again, they just turn up. Yeah. You know, we had one go down the grade last year, about 16, 17 pounds, didn't know he was in the pond. Really? That's this big old thing coming down the table. Yeah. And uh, he's still out there lurking around somewhere now. Is when it? you're feeding the fish sometimes, you see this big old brown shape come through. It sort of just reminds you that you know where he is, and there's quite, there's probably about a dozen, half a, you know, do, yeah, a dozen actually on the farm spread out here, all between sort of ten and fifteen, sixteen pound. So the size of the uh, the site here, you now, what, what sort of acreage is that you got there? Now? It's about four or five acres. The size. Yeah, and how many ponds are on there? 
we got 10 large growing ponds and then loading ponds and ponds for fry and everything and you know and that sort of thing then obviously there's no sets um it's not set up as you know each pond is you know bigger size they just go where, the, where there's space we fill up so we're continuously right. splitting fish and grading, um, and, grading and, and splitting and splitting you know although we do that many fish end of the day it's like talking about the supermarket thing every fish we grow on this farm gets looked at by a fisherman you know, you might grow 250,000 fish, but everyone gets looked at, gets caught at, gets looked at, probably gets photographed. So the condition of the fish have got to be top notch. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is why we supply, you know, the, the big waters up country because the fish quality is, is so good. Yeah. You know, um, we, you know, there's no one, there's people who grow fish as good as us, without a doubt. There's a great fish farmer out there. There's no one to grow any any fish better than us. You know, we do. Yeah. We are we are top of the top of the yeah. Premier League with growing fish with yeah. other fish farmers as well. Yeah. So you stock. Any waters around here? Obviously, you stock only well, my own. Which is is it? Cool. Yeah, we don't do any. Any. Well, I'm saying that that's an actual lie. We just started doing South West Lakes Trust waters last year, so I've just started taking on that contract now. Which is, it's I think four lakes we do for them, which is down, down as far as Cornwall. Um, All right. So we do Kennet, Burrow, Sydney, Back, and Stillians. So the four I do for them, and we're doing them again this year. On Wales as well, yeah. Yeah, one or two in Wales. Not as many as you used to do. They've all, like I said, they're all gone to course now, which is yeah. a bit of a shame. But do you have problem? Not supposed problems because there's one or two fisheries up with us on fish farms. You know, nothing on this scale. Autumn time, they they lose sleep, you know, mm. because they 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 lose so many fish. Our club have lost fish so many times with leaves. Have you got a system here? Which yeah, I mean, leaves are a bane in my life. Really, used to be a bane in my life. We've got leaf greens now, which we put in again twenty odd years ago. Yeah. But I can remember the autumn when it was bad up there with Dad. We had 14 screens going across the leet. So on the bad nights, these screens were 15 foot long, six foot deep in the water. Yeah, and four, I say 14 of them. And you'd clean them all, be pulling them out. It was such a hard job. They'd be full of leaves. You'd pull them out, finish the 14th screen, and start again. Uh, and, you know, but we have got a better system in now, thank God, which is um, a lot better. Yeah, so. But. You know, we still have bad nights with that, but it's yeah. a lot. Of, you, it's a one-person job now. It doesn't yeah. take fifteen minutes to clean it off. On a bad night, you might have to do it every two or three hours. But compared to what it used to be, it's um, it's a breeze, really. Also, you'd have to get up in the night just to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and imagine. obviously, river height sluice gates will be turned down. You know, and also turned up when the river's dropping. So I'm always watching the river gauges. Um, winter, snow, ice. It's not a major problem unless the river's really low. So, so most of the, the stock you've got sort of are the two pound, I guess. Yeah, two most. pounds, the most common size. Yeah. Do you keep like a pond to one side or? To, to be honest, if I had a, a set up like this, I'd always I thought like I'd have a pond to one side, just for me, mm. just not to, not to fish for them, just to have a few, you mm. know, just like see how big they can get to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't. <sighs> Going back again, sort of 20, 20 odd years ago, when when big fish was was the big was the thing to have. I'm mean, nice to get the trout fishing all the time. I mean, nice to just be a constant reader of that trout fisherman. Mainly looking at all the pictures of the fish that have come from our farm. Yeah, you know, yeah. there always used to be these big old chunks of you know ten, fifteen, twenty pound fish. And the biggest fish I think we've grown was twenty seven. Did you? Yeah, the biggest. I think the biggest fish that I had to go grow at Tavistock was something like thirty, thirty two. So each grow a was lot that of, intentional or was it just Yeah, no, to intentional. Be, yeah, we it? have a big pond of fish and just keep pushing and pushing them. I mean, we had ponds and ponds of, you know, 8 to 10, 8 to 15, just big fish. They were so popular, you know. Um, whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But, you know, the, the, big, the big fish, you know, thing. It's a risk that, I huge suppose, risk. invest in a big fish. The fish, the, you know, and the, the, I shouldn't be saying it really, but the fish aren't as hard as they used to be, you know. They're not, the trout are not as hard as they used to be, you know, as in getting through a summer on, on a fish farm, you know. I mean, the, the, small, the big, small fish are fine, two, three, four, five pound fish are fine, but bigger fish do struggle in the warm weather now. Feel free to visit my online shop on my website, where you will find a selection of my most popular Irish sign prints, plus a choice of ghillie kettles and cooking accessories. Or if you would like to experience one of my guiding and instruction packages, feel free to message me. Or, again, take a look at my tuition and guiding page at castingkerryjones.com. Do you find yeah. that the temperature, if you, the temperature here, say, if you were stocking somewhere up in Wales now, mm. 
Is it important that the temperature of the the truck you can see where the water's in is the same as the lake, or is just they they quite acclimatise? It's all right quick. if they're both. When, when, yeah, I mean the summer we're talking obviously. If the if the lake's warm, then you're you're in trouble. But what I used to do is take a tank, or take sorry, take a pump with me on the tank, pump the lake water into the tank, and leave it for ten to fifteen minutes. Right. Get the fish acclimatise. They come out like no problem. Oh right. Yeah, so we used to do that every time. Otherwise, you put them in, you're in trouble. Especially if there's a little bit of weed. You know, the fish are going, they hit that weed, they're just turning straight over, and they yeah. won't. They won't, still won't move. They just won't not move unless you go and give them a tap. They just stay there and die. So it's very important you hang around and make sure yeah. they don't like the weed. And I suppose the bigger fish, especially, are most susceptible to. Yeah, you would. Um, yeah, you, you'd, be, you'd be a crazy man to travel big fish now in in the summers. Yeah. Really, you know, really, it's a it's a. You know, spring and autumn thing, really trapping big fish around. I remember this trout fishery, I told you actually, um, in Mid Wales, uh, Cribbin, Troidebrin, and uh, he actually brought this one particular trout. It was 20 plus, it was, you know, and uh, he was keen to put it in because he was getting to a nice size. He wanted it caught, you know, mm. and he put it in into this lake. I can't remember what it was. He put it in in the afternoon or the morning or vice versa, whatever he wanted to do. And he put it in the lake. Within an hour, he was just dead. He Nightmare. was, a, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's not I good. suppose, like, when you feed something up, it's got the same size heart, I guess. Well, that's as it. The two pounder. So all our weight. And these big, these big fish. Again, it's going back to when when big fish were the, the thing to have years ago. You know, the big old fat. I mean, if you gutted one, it would have three or four pound of fat on it. Yeah. I mean, you know, we obviously used to lose them on the farm, and Dad would gut them, and they'd just be enormous amount. I mean. They'd be, Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. And this little heart. Yeah. This little heart is pumping that massive fish, you know. Yeah. And uh, this is why we grow. We don't push our fish on this farm. You know, everything, you know, your food conversion rate suffers a little bit. Of course it does, <coughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but we don't push. We're, you know, they're fed twice a day, yeah. not push. So we do try and avoid that big fat fish, you know. Even even the two pounders are, are all, all got nice slim bellies on them. They're not yeah. all hanging down, and they're they're all like rockets, really. Yeah. Which is what which is why we're well known for, really. Well, I've experienced the, the fight off these trout because I fished with uh, Sam and Kid last year in Wimbledon. Mm. Now that is a lake which you took over a few years ago, yeah. Our fifth season this season. We're opening in two weeks, so yeah, it's been um, it's pretty, been a bit of a bit of a ride, I must admit. Because the fish that day when we fished it, I totally didn't expect it. It was cold, it was towards the end of the season, but the fish were right up on the surface, the, the spawn particular day, which, which we were both were stunned. And we had quite a few fish, and if there was count, mm. actually we had a few. And, um, but something which I did have, which doesn't happen all that often, I had fish taken to the back end, one particular fish, mm. screaming. Mm. And I thought, oh, it's got to be six, seven pounds. Mm. But it was a lovely fish, it came in, it was about two and a half, three. Yeah. But the fin was like a, like a, like a spade. Yeah, that's what you know? we like. That's what yeah. we like. Yeah. Bright silver as well. Beautiful you know? fish. Yeah, they are beautiful fish. So, will you pre-stock now ready for the new season? Fish are getting ready. Yeah, yeah. We're going to start next week. Um, probably Monday, Tuesday next week. We'll get them. We'll get them in there. And we've got some cracking fish going in this year. You know, we've we gambled a little bit last year by growing a lot of bigger fish through the summer. Um, again, just just fed nice and slow. You know, so hopefully not avoiding these big fish with loads of fat on them. So we got a lot of a lot of I don't know five to eight to go in. That's is super fit, super big tails, and obviously the normal stockies as well. So um, a lot of our fish are grown on in in our in our inlet channel. So instead of being in a pond just swimming around against a bit of current, they're in our main inlet channel. So seven, so it's like like a That's stream. Right. There's seventeen million gallons flowing down all day. They're just sat in that water swimming around, keeping fit. Again, once again, not push, just tickle along with the food, growing like torpedoes really. Long, yeah. slim, and they're gonna rock it. These fish. Do you ever fish? Because you obviously you said you were a fly fisherman as well. Have you ever, since you've taken over Wimbledon, have you ever fished it? Do you know what? It, it reminds <laughs> it reminds me of a story years ago when I thought I'd get a boat, and we spent months doing this boat up, months and months, and I think we went out it twice. No. And that's a bit like taking Wimbledon. Mm. I thought they'd be at all the time because I love Wimbledon. I learned to fish thirteen years old up there. You know, when I, it was my first lake I fished on. I was thirteen or fourteen. Um, How was it? Yeah. And we spent lots of time there with the kids growing up. So it's a very, it's a lake that's very close to my heart. And um, yeah, I thought I'd be up there every night. I think the first season I might have fished 
<sighs> probably maybe a dozen times. So you could put your own boat there then, could you? Um, back then you could. No, 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 oh. no, no, not, not, not then. But um, I was bank fishing up then. Oh, right. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, bank fishing up there. Up at Bethams, I always remember it. Is it? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but no, no, first season I think I fished 12 times and it's died slowly. I'd not Last year it might have been twice, which is pretty, pretty grim really. Yeah. Because I love Wimbledon. I just love everything about it. I love the you know the way it is the way the the shape of it really more than anything. I mean it's only seven seven uh, people. I think seven or nine miles round. I should know it really. And, uh, and it's I like can imagine really why you don't fish it because by the sounds of it you were like your father, bit of a workaholic. Like because I know we'll come on to it now. You have got the pub as well now, mm. so it's finding time to it is finding to share time. It out, like. it, but it's time I need to find really. You yeah. know. It's, it's um, hey, you know, we're talking to fishermen here. Fishermen's great. It's a great way to get out and forget everything, yeah. any problems. Pick up the rod. It's, it's, a, it's a great sport, yeah. and I, I do love it. I love it, you know, river fishing, lake fishing. When I did fish it in the last year, we, as I said, we had some great fish, rainbows. But then we also had, probably between us, about half a dozen browns. Yeah. And they were all like a pound and a half. Mm. Are, they, are they natural then? Or are they These fish are fish? natural fish. Yeah. They are, are yeah. they? Because they thought they must be stopped. Yeah, natural. I'm, I'm not saying there was never a trip would stop there in the past, but these fish you're catching now are all wild. There's two great streams, three, three, three feeder streams that feed it, and they run like salmon up these streams in the autumn. It's amazing. It was up the arm, actually. We, we mm. caught them. And they were within a foot or two of the bank. Yeah. And I kept, when, it was, when we were fishing it, there was... Um, these guys, they were talking to us on the jetty. The, the week before, if I remember right, somebody said there was a 14-pounder. Yes, that's right. Out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some big that browns in natural. there. And a, a friend of mine was fishing around um, Bethan's Bridge, I think summer before last, first light. And he said the browns were just smashing the, the fry. Um, he said the, it, was, it was amazing. So, you know, early, early summer, first thing in the morning. It's almost like a the secret brands. lake. And lots of people I know, I fished it years ago, probably mm-hmm. about 20 years ago, and that was it until last year. And lots of anglers, they fished it over the years, but never mm. got back to it, like, you know? Yeah, it did. Like, I think it went off the scene for quite a while, which is a shame. Yeah. You know, but I hope we've, we've put it back on there now and, uh, you know, moving forward with it. Yeah. I think there's only great things to be had from Wimbledon, really. <clears throat> so it's starting, what's the date, opening day? 26th of Feb. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to crack on and uh, yeah. yeah so what's the situation there with boats <coughs> have we got a pre-booked boats or how many yeah. boats we got there we got 14 14 boats and the, and the disabled boat which is a really good boat it's a cool one so the floor comes up is that the same boats yeah. you got out here yeah it is there? yeah I bought these from stocks actually I bought six boats from stocks and I've done them all up um, oh, and right. obviously sold stocks and so I had some of those boats from there we spent some time doing them up so we'll have 14 14 cool on the water which are all booked for opening day is all they? gone um, so yeah it looks like it's going to be a good one yeah. You can't put your own boat in there? No, you can't. You can put your, you know... Your, um, I don't think anywhere it does now, but I remember back home with us, at least of Ran, there used to be, you could you could put your own boat there for a price for yeah. the year, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone does it now, to be we honest. We get guys come up with the fishing kayaks. You fly fish from the kayaks. As I think it's a launch fee for, like, £7. Is it? So we get a lot of them come up, and, and longs us long as two together in a buddy system. And we get a lot of the um, float tubers come up as well. All oh, right, yeah. So they all... They will uh, all head off and have a go together. You've never done that. I'd like to have a go at it. Yeah, I've done it once. And I wouldn't be in a hurry to do it again, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if it was the actual floor tube's fault, but when I fished it, it was the old style. Well, it, it had a back on it, yeah. but a really, quite a high back. Yes, yeah. So I thought, yeah, just go in and just it'll drift down. Because the back was on it, if you had to keep paddling to go straight. Just to drift, <laughs> because the wind wanted to take you round all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, And uh, I think you you just got to be fit, get those legs going with those flippers, you know. You've got to be fit and hope you don't want to weigh, I think. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter, really, with you in the water, anyway. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no. We'll, we'll definitely, definitely. So you allow floor this. tubing, yeah? Yeah, we do, yeah. Buddy Cause system, long as two of you, so you look after each other, and it goes wrong. Oh, is there? Yeah. Because there's one or two anglers I know that I'd love it. yeah. And I don't think it's allowed in in, waters in West Water, no. Uh, they allowed it one, one year, and then they, they took it off then, yeah. for some reason. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to have somebody with you too. Yeah, you've got to have buddy system, you know, all oh, safety, right. safety first. So um, same with the kayaking as well. Yeah. Not just two of you, it's fine. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. We get quite a few float tubers come up. Is it? Have a competition, yeah. Sometimes I have eight, eight or ten of them in there. Um, yeah. Now, you've gone to one step further now as well, because not only are you happy to, to stock the lake and to run the lake, mm -hmm. you've, you've got a pub now as well. We bought the pub. <laughs> we did the Georges a mile away from the lake. Um, it's a strange story, actually. We didn't actually know it was on the market, and we were only talking a week before we knew it was on the market, how it would be good to have some accommodation for the fishermen. And then a fisherman rang. It's not for sale, they're shut, which we didn't know about. So we made inquiries and they said it already sold and then we kept we sort of kept on it and that fell through and we, we bought it. Yeah, it was a gamble, it was in lockdown, so we weren't able to open it. So we spent those few months doing it up and refurbishing it and you know what, what did you say? You needed to win something, did you? Just well we just it just yeah, it was just tired. we just took a lot of stuff. It was just tired. Painting, yeah. put a new system in so everybody's got a nice shower and fast water because there's only like a one inch pump supply in the whole pub, so two showers were on, you had a drip. So we sorted that problem out. So oh, all nice showers. Um did the bearers off a little bit. No, it, you know, just, it just needed a bit of TLC. So really. you do food there as well, do not you? We do food, yeah. We've got a good chef. Um, if I'm on my feet with that one, need a bit of luck. He was looking for somewhere, somewhere to go to and, and move to because um, the previous place he was had been sold, so his accommodation had gone. So um, Dave is very good. Um, so how far, I know where I come there uh, last year. I can't remember, how far is it from the lake there? It's a mile. It is like Literally, close. mile, mile and a half, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's really good for close. anglers to stop It's there. great for anglers, yeah. So obviously the main reason of buying it was for, for anglers really, to give them a bit of a, a bit yeah. of a place to go to and a fishing pub and to have a chat in the evenings. And um, it's just started to work really. We're getting a lot of bookings now from anglers coming down. South Wales boys are all starting to come down now. Um, so it's, it's just it's just going the way we want it to go. Yeah, really. I think really you're going to benefit this year. Well, the next couple of years probably is because South Wales has gone really downhill when it comes to trout fishing. Mm. There's a few fisheries. Uh, but the reservoirs, I don't know, they just don't want people fishing there, you know. Yeah. I hope it'll change. I hope so. Yeah. It's a shame. There's some, there's been lovely fisheries around South Wales, some bigger yeah. fisheries, beautiful fisheries. Yeah. I, mean, I, guess, I guess you suffered last year to do with stocking because the fisheries didn't open. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a bit of a bit of a thing to do. I mean, um, yeah, we, we were definitely shut with everything, but the fisheries were one of the first places to open back up again with the golf courses. I think we opened up first. Yeah. Angling Trust pushed for that because it was outdoor space, you know, not near anybody. Yeah. Um, so the fisheries were one of the first places to open back up, and fishing went mad through the whole country. It went mad. I mean, you know, every spare trout was gone at the door to other mm -hmm. fisheries, yeah, other fish farmers selling on again who'd run out. It was crazy. Um, the whole of the fishing industry, fly fishing, course fishing just went absolutely through the window. Yeah. And uh, the licenses rocketed through the, through the roof. So um, we just hope it carries on. We hope these people that took up fishing in lockdown carry on. Because, um, yeah, it'll, it's great. great Have you, when was the last time you actually cast a fly? <laughs> well, on Wimbledon quite, quite a while ago. <laughs> it would have been Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, well, I was up in Bahamas, actually. Bahamas? I was in uh, bone fishing in November. Yeah, mm. so it's something I tick off my, I've ticked off the yeah, bucket list now. Was it good? Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, everyone I've heard yeah. is uh, I've said the same. It doesn't. It's not something in my head I want to do, but no doubt, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would do it. So did you catch then? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And we went for the bones, so we had I had nine for the week, which was was. And when we got back to the airport in, in NASA, we met up with a lot of other guys that been fishing at Cooked Island. All the all the popular places you go and fish for bones, and I think they, they I think most one of them caught was only seven. So. And in their experienced guys, so me going out bone fishing for the first time and catching nine. It's typical bloody fishing, is it? We got on the flats on the first day, a friend of mine caught one straight away, and I caught three and a half an hour. And I turned around and said to him, I'm going to get 20 today. I ended up, never saw another fish. <laughs> it's very visual, isn't it? It I'm is, and we, we had um, quite a bit of breeze all week, which is not ideal. So spotting them was just extremely, extremely hard. So they came blind, did they? Or did you have to wait until you see something? You had to wait. You had to wait to see the tails. Yeah, until they were sort of thinning, yeah. which was, uh, which was, which was hard to see with the ripple and everything. So it, it was tough conditions, but we did really well. And first time I went, I had nine. My friends had seven each. And uh, David, who went, who's been going for twenty years, I think he had up, he had nineteen or twenty. So he could, he had wow. eyes like a got osprey. That man. But um, <laughs> it was. <laughs> He was pointing out fish in front of us, 10 yards yeah. away, which we couldn't see. And he was getting frustrated because we couldn't see him. I mean, that's how experienced he was. But uh, it was great. And I'll um, 
yeah, going to get back there again one day, I think. You go on this cream of fishing here, and you fly around the other side of the world almost as the I know. The flight. It's not good, is it? It's not no. good. No, I'm going to get back on the lake this year up with my ball and um, try and get some of those browns out, I think. Yeah, that's something I'm definitely going to do. I was, I was talking to Simon when we were fishing it last year. Because I thought, they've got to be... St- they, 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 they're like pristine-looking fish. Mm. They're absolutely... They're bright, butter, yellow. Beautiful fish. Beautiful there's a lot fish. of places you go, the, the browns are quite silvery almost. Yeah. You know, but i never seen so yellow colour trout. They are incredible-looking fish. Yeah. I just really wondered. Are. Sometimes when a trout, brown trout, where I find it goes big, it loses that yellow, most of them. I wonder... If the big ones still keep it, I wonder. Yeah, we've had a few uh, of the big ones caught some pictures. They're a very, very, bit lighter, a bit lighter. Lovely looking yeah. fish, mind you, but um, not as buttery as the as the smaller fish, without a doubt. They definitely lose a little bit, yeah. but um, still good looking fish. What's the? I am looked at the ticket system for um, Wembley Ball. Do you allow catch and release? We do. We yeah. do. I was. That's something I debated for a long time before we opened, because being a fish farmer. You know, I don't want people going out catching fish and putting them back in. I want them taking off the lake, so that lake buys more off us. Yeah. So catch and release was a, yeah, I debated it for a long time. Business-wise, profit-wise, you know, because um, we're in a lot of money in the, in, in, the, in the bloody fishing, if you get it right. Um, it was probably the best decision doing, really, catch and release, because that's where we do make a bit of money. I mean, if people got women born catch five fish, I'm not making any money at all, really. Yeah. You know, it's really it's the very very slim margin. So we make our money on the boats and the, and the catch and release tickets. Um, people catch five fish, yeah, you know. It's, yeah. Um, so it's it's tough to make that those mark. But we you know we're, we're giving it a go. Prices have gone up a little bit this year. The main ticket's gone up a pound, um, but we've got we've had to get rid of the concession ticket this year, which is a bit of a yeah. we're getting a bit of earache for it. But um, I I've got mixed feelings with catch and release. Maybe it's slightly different with a large expanse of water like Wimble Ball. But the ch- smaller trout fisheries, what I find is, with a lot of people catch and release, mm. yeah, the trout are still there, mm. and they do survive, but they get harder to catch. So yeah. anglers are going there then, and mm. they're finding it hard, because mm. these fish are just spooked so much, you know. I think you've got to have the turnover of catch and kill, haven't you? I think, you, you, without a doubt, without a doubt. So our catch and release ticket is, is, you keep your first two, you've got to kill your first two, and then you can catch and release after that. So we've got that turnover. Of, of fish, but I think I think small fisheries that do it, yeah, do struggle without a doubt. Those fish do become a little bit um, more artful yeah. and very hard to catch. With wimbledon or a fishery that size, that does catch and release. Those fish can get caught and they can be gone. They might not see a fly again for a f- couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, so it's a big difference from catch and release on a small fishery to a big fishery. One hundred percent, it's a um, huge difference. Have you got any goals for this season? Just, ah, oh, my goals, just, we, you know, fish, fish fitness really is the most, most important thing, really, for, for me, for Wimbledon. Because I love hearing when, I know it's, a lot of people don't like, don't like hearing when people get snapped off or lose, or that, but I love hearing that. <laughs> I know I put a fish in there that's just giving someone a nightmare, you yeah. know, and, and hearing people have gone down to the backing, I hear it a lot. You know, I hear, I, what I hear a lot is, it's the first time I've been down to the backing. It's the first time I've seen the backing. Yeah. You know, I hope my backing's tied on. But a gentleman last year who, whose backing wasn't tied on, just as, as, as soon as the fly line right? come off the reel, it went. It was gone. So it was, uh, it's a costly um, mistake. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare for him. But yeah, I love love all those stories. I hope it was a floating line. <laughs> at least you can follow it around me. Yeah, it was, it was found again. It was found again about a week later. Yeah. Um, the gentleman said it, it. You know, this massive fish took my line, and it, was, it ended up being a two pound. A two yeah. wooden ball, two pound, but they go, they go like rockets. I mean, they've yeah. got, they got the depth up there. Yeah, Wimmer ball is such a hard lake to fish if you're not a bloody good angler. Yeah. I am not a bloody good trout fishing angler. I love the trout fishing, you know, I, but I, I can see the difference between an average angler and the top boys. And I never really realized that until I took the lake on, really. And I can see it. A and huge I think, difference. actually, listen to what you said, probably one of the biggest reasons why they're so fit is they didn't run in water here yeah i'm like that you know a lot of the lakes some of the res was even they did nets on the lake which Mm. you think is good Mm -hmm. same water but you know there's no muscle as such in a lot of these fish that's right yes i mean this site here's got 17 million gallons a day so each each pond's got a 10 inch pipe full bore million and a half gallons a day going through you know these fish have 
got no choice. You know, they're swimming against current all day. But obviously, the better fish go into the leet and become yeah. even fitter again. And I'm actually designing a few things now um, to hopefully make them even fitter again. We're going to get them on site within the next couple of months, and hopefully, the fish will um, be even better yeah. for, for end of the season, next season. Well, there's a question I ask in all my podcasts, which probably is a, is a difficult, a strange one for you, because you spend most of your time on the farm and running a fishery. There's still one question which I ask everyone, which I'll ask you. Mm. Where would you want to be to make your last cast? That's a good question. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time to wait for me to think about that one. Hopefully, gonna teach my son to fly fish this year. He should have been fly fishing years ago. He's, he's 20 years old now. He's caught salmon on the spinner and everything when he was a young man, or a young boy, shall I say. Um, he hasn't really gotten to fly fishing over the years, but I said to him this year, you're gonna to learn to fly fish. So I think I'd like to, my last cast I'd like to be with him. If, if, if we're mobile, down the arm, fishing for the Browns. So that's where I'd like to be. Or that's maybe what? the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'd prefer the Bahamas. Yeah, I'm sure he would. I'm yeah. sure he would, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for the chat and thanks for inviting me down. Pleasure. And uh, we'll have a wander around now to have a look at the, uh, the set yeah. that we got. Yeah, yeah right? come and have a look and hopefully we can impress you. Great stuff. Well, cheers, Mark. That's right, no problem. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please consider becoming a Patreon, where you will get two extra podcasts each month. That's one every week, plus bonus content, photography, and other exclusive content plus access to over 60 plus episodes. You can join my Patreon channel by visiting patreon.com forward slash casting with Kerry Jones. Or see the links on my website, castingwithkerryjones.com. Or see my posts on Facebook and Instagram. Well, that's all for now. Tight lines and don't strike too soon. <laughs>